Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl, ha, 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 And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, we're coming in with our favorite <laughs> show. <laughs> that guy doing Greenleaf is back. Hey. Church is back in session. Hey. To all of the ushers, y'all know what y'all need to do. Y'all need to get in the aisles, pass out them fans, make sure the collection plates are ready because we got a new thing going on at Calvary. Yeah. Or should I call it H&H? &H? H &H. I ain't happy about it, but I'm going to keep staying in these meetings and I'm going to keep being on Deacon Sykes back. And hopefully we can get our church back because this right here, see, see, they call Woo! it, they call H and H Harm and Hope, but we're gonna call it uh, Hustle Headquarters, Mike. <laughs> that's what. That's that exactly hell. what it, it's it hustle, is. It's Hustle Headquarters up in there now, buddy. And before I even get started, hey. Gigi, get your skit, get your skit, and get out of there. Yeah, you and Charlie, y'all need to link up and go and go back home. Go somewhere. <laughs> like they used to tell us at the club, you ain't got to go home but get the hell out of that. Yeah, because y'all live close. I mean, I think what Gigi from Arizona. Yeah. And, and, and Charlie from California. Yeah, y'all need to link up and go home. Man. So to all of y'all that have come back home for Revival over here at Calvary, welcome back. Yeah. I probably haven't seen some of you all since last season. Um, for anybody that's new that have come through here, then welcome to the channel. Consider hitting that subscribe button. Yeah. Go ahead and rate the video while you're at it. Thumbs up or thumbs down. It doesn't even matter. At this point, you've already been counted. And make sure that your bell is clicked in so we can come Bing. through like your ring doorbell and we'll be like, Bing! All right, so we're going to get into it. Original sin. <clears throat> so when we left off last at last season, we know that Bishop had had a little episode on the pulpit and whatnot. So he had a little issues with his heart. We we, we were scared because we thought that we had lost the Bishop. Yeah. We thought we was going to have to come through Publix and get some fried chicken and some macaron cheese and all that to bring to the repast. But we were able to keep our money in our pocket. Yeah. And he lived. He lived to fight another day. Yeah. So we're over at the house and um, they said their prayer because they know that the fight that they have going forward is going to be a good fight. Yeah. And it's a fight to be fought and won. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. So over at Calvary, because I'm still going to call it Calvary, y'all. I'm <laughs> not even, see, not gonna, I'm not going to do it. Calvary, so, hashtag, hustle, <laughs> hustle headquarters. headquarters. <laughs> Over there at Calvary, right, we see Gigi is on the pulpit, we see this white man, and we see this black man. We see the green leaves sitting out there in the congregation. So we already knew that the transition had already happened. When I came to church that Sunday, they told me, Lynette, just go ahead and sit behind the green leaves. We'll explain everything in the meeting after church. So after church, I figured out what the hell was going on with my ministry, okay? <laughs> so what had happened was... Because of all the skit that the Green Leaves and Bishop and them had got into, you know, we forgave him. You know, we prayed about it and all oh, yeah. we forgave oh, yeah. him and whatnot. Oh, yeah. And we still love him as our bishop. But we don't lost the church to Harmony and Hope. They don't came through and pretty much paid Deacon Sykes a little yeah. bit of extra mm -hmm. cash mm -hmm. to pretty much swindle their way into the ministry. Now, Deacon Sykes, I'ma knock that Patty LaBelle, if only you knew <laughs> we off of your goddamn head if you don't stop this foolishness. Cause I know where you live. <laughs> Alright. So we have learned that Gigi is the interim pastor for one year. After that one year, we'll figure out if she's gonna be the permanent replacement for Bishop or not. But in the meantime, we're under harmony and hope with this man named Bob, I can already call him Bob Whitford. <laughs> Bob Whitmore and yeah. this guy named Phil DeMorne. Phil DeMorne, yeah. Whatever. The two hustlers. The two hustlers. Yeah. So basically, we don't turn Calvary into Kenneth Copeland Ministries here. Pretty much. So now is this organized religion. And as Lady May would say it, the gospel McDonald's. Yeah. Basically where and they want it structured so that wherever you go all over the world, mm -hmm. you'll be able to pick out a hope and harmony and hope or whatever ministry and you'll know exactly what it is that you're gonna get. It's kinda like the Jehovah's Witnesses from what I've understood. They all teach the same thing at the same time. The mm -hmm. structure is the same. So you could go from 
any hall to hall mm -hmm. and there really is not a big difference right yeah so they're structuring it like that and they're condensing the services down and so we can get in and get out i'm not opposed to that i'm opposed to putting a whole lot of meat in the structure and, and let's go yeah because i ain't got a whole lot of time for the fluff i don't need all yeah that. we still need a little bit of holy ghost mixed in with the, stru yeah. the structure man you you've removed the holy ghost you ain't you got nothing but you got nothing but a meeting with a bunch of people as we're speaking about that <laughs> so mr bob gets up to take the pulpit because he has to pretty much reinforce this new structure to the congregation and he's basically complimenting all the women on their hats. I was like, player. I've never seen so many hats. Like, All these hats. I said, well, how many black churches have you, you taken over? To, yeah. Baptist churches. Because that's all, all you see up in there, Mike. He's, he compliments the choir on a great performance. Hmm. Now, y'all know that church, black church folk, we don't talk we don't, like that. Yeah, no, no performance. It's no performance. We it's the a worship's Lord. experience. Yeah, the Lord used you this time. Yeah, in a good praise and worship yeah. experience. Not a performance, but we already know how this is going. This yeah. is a business structure for him. Exactly. It's a money grab. Yep. And Deacon Sykes, with her only you knew we ain't going, she with it too. <laughs> okay, so... He goes ahead and he introduces Gigi. He tells Gigi, you know, let's go ahead and give it up for your intro pastor. And when he passes the baton on to her, he passes her and tell her. Keep it short. So See, that's I'm, like, I'm like, you you know what? You can't even take him over no black Baptist church. Because uh -uh. there ain't no such thing as telling that pastor to keep it short. Because they're going to go longer just because you said that. Because matter of fact, if you ain't clapping and shouting, you might as well add 20 more minutes on to the service. <laughs> I'll tell you right that. So you better get up and do no, something. You better get up and respond and say something. Say, who the who? <laughs> like Gary said. Who the who for Jesus? Who the who for Jesus? <laughs> it's 8.30. I want to go home. Oh. Listen, if y'all have never seen Gary Owens oh, experience man. at a black church, just freaking YouTube it. Yeah. You will get your life at his experience at a black church. He said, I want to go home. <laughs> I need to go to work. <laughs> I'm late for work. <laughs> so... Gigi was shook, but as we see, Gigi got through the service and whatnot. And Lady May was throwing all kinds of facial shade towards yeah. Gigi. And Gigi was like, Mama, you look like you got a whole lot of notes. What's up? She was like, it was a very condensed, condensed. service. Mm -hmm. And Gigi was like, yeah, because that's what I was told. So at this point, Bishop was like, you know what? I don't have enough. I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. I'm going to give him and her, talking about Dick and Sykes, <laughs> a piece of my mind. So the two women are teamed up together at this moment, and they were like, you know, Bishop, Daddy, no. Sit back. We'll handle it. We're going to work everything out. But instead of Bishop going over there and confronting them, Lady May goes over there mm -hmm. with all the shade in the world. Yep. Pretty much telling them, listen, this is the way that we do church. This is the performance. So what is it that you're trying to do here? Like she said, you trying to make this the McDonald's of gospel? Yeah. That the number one is the same all over the country. I mean, come on, this is not what we do. And when she said this right here, I wrote it down because I need to learn. I need to say it the way that she said it. She told them that there are two things that humans like done slowly. Slow. And preaching is just one of them. And I said, Lady May, you nasty, because uh -huh. I know what that second, I know what second one, is. one is. Yeah. And if you let Bishop back in that bedroom, you can get that too. Hey. But it ain't McDonald's, so you ain't <laughs> had it. Yeah, no. So as Deacon Sykes is walking away with all the attitude in the world as if she has won some kind of fight, she's also mentioning the fact that she want to do three services. Now, this is where the power of being a preacher comes in at. Who going to preach them? Exactly. You want three? You preach the third one because I'm exactly. going home and eat me some fried chicken. Because ain't, ain't it so funny the ones that, that did in the church that don't do skit is the ones that have all the ideas in the world for you to implement. So Deacon Sykes walks away and Lady May was <clears throat> get ready to be a good Christian on this Sunday morning. <clears throat> but I taught my first lady well. She looked down at that chick's shoe and she had some toilet paper rolling around at the bottom of her shoe. She was about to tell her. And then that voice of Lynette, Sister Lynette was like, let the devil win. She ain't tell her skit. 
I said, good job, first lady, because I wouldn't have told a skid either. Well, you ain't going to shave me and do what you want to do. And, and then I say, you some embarrassment. Yeah. I'm not that good of a person. But it reminds me of what happened to me at church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you really going to tell them that? Yeah, put it this way. I went to the bathroom to drop the kids off at the pool. Let's put it that way. It was bad if you dropped them off in public. I dropped them off at the pool, at the church. The good old Baptist church. We was not at a Baptist church. Hmm? We was at a we are a full gospel church, but anyway, back to gospel. And I went back out in the congregation, and I turned my back and walked away. And one of the brothers said, "Hey, Stan, come here." <laughs> he said, "You got a piece of toilet paper right in the back of your pants." <laughs> now, if you had walked back in that sanctuary like that, I was in the sanctuary. That's what Wait. I, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I was in the center room. He said, you got a piece of toilet paper. <laughs> no, I, no, I never paper. knew that. I thought yeah. he put you in the back. No, I wasn't in the back. I was out in the congregation. Man. What in the everlasting yeah. hell? Yeah. So, <laughs> moving forward, now that <laughs> First Lady <laughs> don't confront it, Bob and um, Deacon Sykes, Bishop throw him, Mr. Bob, up. Into what used to be his office. With Bob his is in it. propped up like it's his office. Talking about so he got circulation problems. All I said, you about to have a real uh -huh. bad circulation problem. You keep fucking with me. Yeah. Well, Bishop pretty much lets Mr. Bob know. Listen, I know you, and I know what kind of games you run, and I I know you for your works. Yep. Mr. Bob <laughs> had went through this church called Jericho. And the pastor at Jericho used to be a really good friend of Bishop's. And um, come, long story short, the pastor at the church had got this addiction to painkillers. He had an injury that he acquired by doing good works for the Lord. Yeah. And uh, he got addicted to them. Harmony and Hope came through, learned about this man's weakness, mm -hmm. exposed it to his people, got his people to turn against him. And they slid in and took the church from yeah. underneath for him. And later on, pretty much that resulted <clears throat> in this man's death. We don't know how the man died, but you pretty much take a man's everything from them. Yeah. And you see how much fight they'll have. That addiction probably got worse mm -hmm. and it probably took him out. So and, and you take the wrong person to church from them, that make them lose their mind. Hey, yeah. Because we got one right here in Richmond. He done no. calm down now, though. But that took us a freaking fire, <laughs> boy. Got hit when well, he said the church was taken from him. We don't know the full story. We're just going to put it this way. He was downtown Richmond. Not downtown Richmond, but. Yes, it was. Yeah, downtown Richmond in an intervene. On his cell phone. On, on live. Talking about, these jokers took my church. I got some lawyers in place. I'm going to get it back because the law gave this to me. And it's mine. And it's mine. And this pastor already don't had three strokes. He don't want to mess with me. Yeah, I was like, uh. Yeah. Somebody in our comments know who this is, too. Because yeah. we were talking about it <laughs> on Instagram. And I, they were like, is, are you talking about such and such? I show a. Yeah, I think we and told about it. On. I think we told, told the family. Yeah, we told this, yeah. this story before. It's yeah. still going on, y'all. Yeah. So from one season to the next, that is still going on. It, it ain't as bad, but yeah, he's still trying to get that church back. Man. Yeah, and he to open up another church, but mm -hmm. he still got his eye on the prize. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Mr. Bob tells um, Bishop, listen, if I were you, I wouldn't worry myself and stress myself out too hard about all of this. And it can't be good for your heart. Don't stress your heart out. You know, referencing the fact that Bishop just had an incident mm. on the pulpit and don't, don't went out. Mm. And, you know, he was getting ready to meet that, that, that <laughs> friend in the morning. In the upper in room. The upper room. But the upper room said, yo, 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 cot ain't quite ready. Yeah, your time. It ain't your time yet. So I said, okay, Mr. Bob, listen, Bishop, if that man offers you a drink of water, don't you take it. Because I don't nope. trust nothing, nothing that he may do to you. You hear yeah. what I'm saying? He definitely a snake in the grass. Yeah. yeah. So over <clears throat> at the house, now that everything don't hit the fan, Carissa and Jacob and their family are back at the house living. 
and Carissa is back on. Y'all know how last season, season we were complaining that Carissa had turned into this nice little Southern belle and kind of yeah. very submissive and kind of, you know, until, you know, her husband was trying to mess around with old um, Miss Gaines' wife. <laughs> but um, Keisha Cole's Gaines. But um, we got the old Carissa back. Yeah. Nasty as Al Va. And she's mad about the fact that she is back in the compound. Now, as any wife should be, I would be quite upset, too, that our marriage and our financial situation has failed to the point where we have to keep moving back in with your parents or anybody's parents, for that matter, to survive. That's stressful on any freaking marriage. I had to tell this story to somebody a few months ago. I was like, as cool as it sounds, mm -hmm. that is stressful on a marriage to have to take yourself and submit yourself under the rules of someone mm -hmm. else's established household. Exactly. That's hard. Mm -hmm. I praise God we have <clears throat> never had to do it. Yeah. Because I don't think I could. I don't think our marriage could survive us bucking up to the point where we had to move with somebody. I don't, I don't, you know, I hate to have to speak something like that, but I don't think I could. I'm not, that, I'm not built for that. I think, I think you could, but it would have to be short lived. Very short, like, yeah. like something I had happened. A deadline, like, we're in you the know, transition. Three, three to six months, I'm out. Yeah, we yeah. building a house. I just gotta chop it up for three to six months, but. Just yeah. to be in there trying to get my skit together with an yeah. uh, indefinite end. But the way I see it, if I'm there with you, I'm going to make your life better too while I'm making my life better. So yeah. we, it's going to be a win-win. It's beneficial for yeah, both parties. Yeah, it's going to be a win-win. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like I said, Carissa is pissed. And she wants Jacob to go out and make somebody get a job to get her up out of that house. That's not a bad idea. But the one thing I can't say about this show that really pisses me off, but it shows, it shines a little bit of light on an ongoing problem that I have seen as a person that has been really engulfed into the church world and all that good stuff is that some people, once they receive a calling, church is the only preparation they have ever done to sustain their life. That's right. So whenever <clears throat> that's that title, yeah. You feel like your call has switched. You feel like God's calling you to something else. You feel mm -hmm. like God's calling you outside of the walls of the church. You no longer can survive in this world because yeah. the only thing that you've ever prepared yourself for was ministry. Yeah, you don't have no skills outside you of church. You have no skill sets that are transferable. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. That's the unfortunate part. That's the unfortunate thing. Now, the only thing that you can really transfer that won't really skip a beat in the church where I'm giving y'all some nuggets if y'all any y'all but listen yeah throw them out there is counseling yes yes that's a transferable skill that is a transferable skill that gives you <clears throat> pretty much a, a leg up on the competition out there because you're able to understand people of all aspects of life when you get right in the door and you get um you get some little hands-on experience for free sometimes. There, there's a, there's another one too, but some people is not fortunate enough to be able to get Which this one? get the position. If you like a Sunday school teacher or Bible study teacher or possible preacher, but the public speaking. Yes. You can use that skill. I mean, you can do like you do at church, but you can use that, you know, that skill and transfer it over and learn the public side, public, the, yeah, the public aspect of it to be able to speak to people and uh, change lives without using church jargon. Yeah. 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 So within Jacob looking <clears throat> entertaining the idea of getting a job he actually is getting this phone call from this lady on his phone what the hell was her name what, um doris doris saunders yeah and he's ignoring the phone but of course Car carissa is like oh is that basic skates wife calling you like back? no you know so um he ended up going to meet with this lady and what is going on is her son is a professional athlete and he is in some skit. Hmm. What we understand, he don't got high, drunk, whatever. He yeah. done ran over a Confederate flagpole or a monument, something. And he in all kinds of skits. So they need a life coach. Someone that's going to get him on the right track. And someone that pretty much has that it factor. So that the, the team can be satisfied. And that we can really get this boy's life on track. So Jacob is sitting down there with... 
the team, I don't know if it was their representative, their owner, whoever it was. And the guy was like, you know what, I like you, Jacob. And you know, you seem like the guy for the job. But honestly, when it comes down to this, if your name is not on somebody's letterhead, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to use you as a life coach for this dude. I think his name was Dante. Yeah. So, Jacob is like, dang, <clears throat> I really do need <laughs> this yeah. title behind my name in order for me to be effective in anything. Like, it's affecting everyone's Everything. livelihood yep. right now. Mm -hmm. So, at the meantime, we got Zora the weed explorer. <laughs> she don't caught with that her daddy was going to be, you know, possibly representing this guy, you know, helping him out. And she... Trying to make him her new love interest. Mm -hmm. Zora. Yep. If you don't sit the entire hind pots down. So you trying to go get another Isaiah. Yeah. She up in there. And even um, Sophia was like, can you just get any kind of good boy? Yeah. You always got to go for the, the bad, bad boys. boys. Zora is at the house talking about so She wants to move into um, Noah's um, old cabin. Mm. Because she's <laughs> a grown A woman. First of all, grown a woman's don't live like um like um uh, Andrew Caldwell said. Grown at I'm great cuss. <laughs> women's don't live with their grandparents exactly. and their mama and their dad. Exactly. You out on your own, player. I said, okay. Making your own way. So Carissa, she had told ask her mama, you know, you think grandma and granddaddy, somebody will let me move into the She said no. <laughs> Carissa was like, hey, I wanna move and then my dad goes sell. So Zora ended up going talking to her grandma, and of course, grandmothers give in to them grandchildren. Yep. And she went ahead and made a deal with her. If you come to Bible study in the morning, you remember how when she was acting up, <laughs> Lady May had her at 5 a.m. Bible study? Yep. Well, it's going to be 5 30 a.m. Bible study. But it ain't about that Bible study. Lady May is taking a dig, taking a stab at Dr. Carissa. Yep. She pissing Carissa off. Yep. She gonna make that woman life a living hell while she up underneath <laughs> that roof. And like Lady May said, what kind of hell is she living in? The, the rent is free. Yeah, the, the, the stand the is free. Mm -hmm. The landscapers are free. So what's what's the trouble? That still ain't the thing. That she is a married woman living with her mother-in-law. I I ain't trying to mess with your flows. You gonna talk about the way she went off in that house? I'm gonna get to. Oh, okay. Cause I, yeah, cause I, I'm gonna, I, gonna get to. I got something to say about that, but I don't want. I don't want miss. I don't want you know mess up your flow like right that, man. Like, nah, you you good? Cause I'm. It's it's it, up it's, next. It's, it's up next right now. It's up next right now. I had to personally prepare for this. See here, y'all heard all the skit that we just talked about, right? Huh. All of this is on Gigi's head. Yeah. All of this in order to bring everybody's lives back into full circle. Uh huh. Everybody's livelihood. Get the church back. Mm -hmm. Everybody's relationships mended. Mm -hmm. It all depends on Gigi. Now, this is the one thing that Gigi don't ask just one request this entire <laughs> freaking episode. <laughs> and her mama gave her a contingency on that. Yep. She said, Mama, when we going to tell people that Lionel is my, my guy dad doing that? Dad. She told her, let's get this church back first. Uh -huh. And then we could talk about it. Y'all know she's going to be in for a, that's 12 a, months. That's a year that she got to hold on to that, man. While she trying to save y'all. Okay. So over at the dinner table, we going to have this whole go off. And it was pretty much beat Gigi up, give her a black eye, drag her down the street, bring blame her, her back. Blame her for the whole thing. And blame all her, her for everything. Gigi is the prodigal daughter. Yeah. She don't came in, daddy don't gave her a ring robe, and now everybody else hates her. And I'm trying to figure out when did her and Charity get to this point in their relationship where Charity has literally told that woman, you came in here, bucked up everybody's life, fix it. Charity ain't been right since Kevin yep. left her. For uh, what you call? It? Yeah, what? Cat? No, what's his name? I can't even. Aaron. Aaron. She Aaron. ain't been right, and then it was Jabari, and then Jabari left her tail. She ain't been right, and then she started taking them pills, and she busted out the guy throwing candy machine. She ain't been right since that. Now, now she want to be a pastor. You don't want to be. That's what I gonna say. She don't want nothing to do with me. She said, I want preach. I said, when did this happen? So now, Carissa is on her about getting Jacob a job as assistant pastor. And Charity is on her head about getting her a job as assistant pastor. And I said, what you gonna preach? Pills and potion? 
because <laughs> you ain't preached a day in your life. I said, when the, when, how do you expect? Now, let's just go ahead and be realistic here, Charity. Mm. I can see Jacob being able to be a very good contender to be AP, as they call it. Yeah. I mean, because yeah, he don't need to skip before. before. Yeah. You, you, you right. praise and worship leader. Yeah. You ain't never did that. You ain't never did this, so you want somebody to take you serious as an assistant pastor, and you ain't preached nothing yet. But see, the crazy part is, Gigi just came to town <laughs> to visit just to pay her respects to her sister Faith. Charlie on on and yep, Queen Sugar. When she came to pay her respects to her daddy. And she got stuck with everybody. Problems. And she don't get drugged in all the way into becoming pastor. Well, she was assistant pastor on the bishop. Yep. Now she the intro pastor. And now she got to get all of them straight to get the church back. And they still giving her hell. And on top of that. Pack your kid and get out. And get out. And they both drunk as skunks. Yep. I mean, drunker than a cooler brown on a Saturday night mm. before a happy hour ended. Huh. What in the everlast? So yeah, Gigi got all of this on her head. And while they are giving it to her left, right, center, up and down, Gigi finally had had enough. And she stood up at the table and I said, slap one of them hoes. Yeah. And I'm going to say hoes because it ain't Sunday. Pre preferably Carissa because she's the one that had the most she mouth talking the, the most skit. But Charity's hurt the worst because that's her sister. sister. Mm -hmm. And she told her, you ain't no good sister. You not this. You not that. You come in here. You messed up the family. Your presence messed up the family. Oh, my God. It she was like, a what? lot going on at the table. And I was like, uh. So I said, Bishop, you ain't going to check your children. Yeah. Uh -huh. What's up with that? He laid up in the corner just making. <laughs> I said, so they don't took your title. They don't <laughs> took your voice, <laughs> too. <laughs> Bishop, man up. Do something. Bring these, bring these girls under submission. Cause, um, yeah, because he didn't really say nothing to Carissa. He said he said the most of charity. Yeah. He told Jacob, keep your mom, you keep your wife out there. Out there Got wine. that wine. <laughs> keep her away from that wine. I was like, what the hell? So when, you know, um, Gigi it ended up getting up from the table. That's when Lady May looked over there at Carissa on the side of her face, melting her face smooth off. Yep. And Carissa was like, I don't care nothing about you staring me down. She said, you know what? She said, yeah, you do have a voice in this family. But that pride and that attitude that you got right there, mm -hmm. ain't no place for that here. And your children are learning right from you. And, sec said, and second of all, you better be glad that they even let y'all even come back there. For free. For free. Because I would have charged you a little something. something. Yeah. Because you still be using some light. So your ungrateful... I I almost cut. <laughs> Your ungrateful tail gonna come in there and talk all loud and come at them like that? Uh -uh. I would've put you out. Indeed, I would've. Yeah, I'll put you out. Like, you know what? <clears throat> Y'all better go on somewhere. Better try to get trial back. Hello. Uh, do your what was it the church without walls? Y'all better do that. Yeah, that one y'all was trying to build across the street from Calvary. Mm hmm So Gigi is sitting there with her mama and she <clears throat> told her mama, Listen, I just gonna have to figure out a way to get Bob to sign off on both of them being pastors. I'm gonna give him an ultimatum. I'm gonna walk if I can't have both of them as my APs. That's the way it's gonna go. Cause this is the only way that I'll be able to bring my family together and everybody be happy for the time being. This is what I need to do. And I'm like, she should be responsible for that. I was like, okay, <laughs> let's see how this goes. So she goes and she talks to Bob and she had a very good argument that Bob has been telling Gigi this entire time mm -hmm. that the success of this transition actually is based on you being in position. Yep, because if voice. you walk, these people are going to pretty much walk away from this ministry oh, yeah. because you are the only thing that they trust right now. Yep. So she basically said, you told me you needed me. So if you need me, then you're going to have to bring both of them on in order for me to stay. Yep. And Bob was like, you know what, Gigi, I've been watching you for a long time. And she said, how? Watching me how? And I said, why are you yeah. shook? Yeah. Why are you shook, Gigi? <laughs> I, I spotted him right off the bat. But later on in this episode, I know why you were shook when he told you that he was watching you. Huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. oh. Remember that thing going on Facebook? I'm watching you. So watching for what? For <laughs> what? I said, okay. So we realized that um, Lady May and Bishop 
<laughs> they sleep in a separate headquarters, right? And sleeping quarters because I forgot that they are officially divorced right yeah, now. Yeah, I forgot about that too. And First Lady May said, what you not going to do is get these cookies and have me send them before the Lord. <laughs> so in order for you to get these good vanilla waffles, yeah. you going to have to end up courting me. Mm -hmm. Like never before, and don't forget, I ain't no little country girl that ain't never had skin. I had home. everything. So you need to come with your skin. He said, "So what you want to ring? Flowers?" Oh, I'm saying, she said, "Yeah, all of that, and then some." Yep. And then she later, and mind you, she's in a negligee the entire time. Yep. And Bishop is over there. He just a lusting. Uh -huh. He ain't gonna know what to do with himself. He gonna go back down there in his little headquarters, and that lotion bottle is gonna end up this <laughs> on there. From that <laughs> nice stand, and he go, he go, he go <laughs> choke that chicken because you ain't had to do him like that, lady. Nah, you had to do him like that. But what he need to do is all he gotta do is give her some brown. You know, later maybe when she get that brown, she get a little loose. Mm hmm. Cause she was fitting to give a lot of something. She won't marry to him. Yeah. Hey. Hey, huh? Hypocritical uh -huh. Christians, man. Yep. Trying to tell you. Now matter she was fact, ready to do matter adultery. Matter fact, yeah. She, matter of fact, she was mad because she he wouldn't give another sausage. Like that old lady. woman said, she said, oh, this dog, I want to get some sausage. Order me some sausage. Because <laughs> the man didn't come through so it. He was, he was chicken skit because of the storms. And she wanted her and sausage. I wanted her sausage. I said, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> the stuff we see on the internet. So, okay, so we got the bishop in them. Well, the outcome of that little meeting that Gigi had with Mr. Bob. I'm going to call him Whitmore again. Whitfield. I'm going to call him Whitfield. Whitmore. Is that this. We don't want your charity. But we'll take you, Jacob. Yep. So when Gigi brings that information back to the family, of course, you got Carissa. She's cool. She is. She good. She I'm good now. She is a June bug. Yep. Jacob is cool as a, June, as a cucumber. And Charity is over there going smooth. It's clean off. off. What about me? Why are you still employed? Why do you still have a job? Yeah. The deal was, both of us or you, you walk. walk. So why didn't you walk? And Grace was like, but once he said that he would take on Jacob, it kind of changed things. Yeah. I figured, like Gigi has a plan, but I'm going to play devil's advocate. That wasn't the deal. No. The deal was both or oh, I no. walk. Yep. And the thing about it when, it, when it comes to charity, I'm going to be fair and Although I don't believe she read it for none of the skit. I'm going to be fair. A deal is a deal. Yeah. And it's always that charity gets <clears> the <throat> skitty end of every stick. And that's yeah. not even act like it doesn't happen. Yeah. Nobody is ever there for charity the way that they're there for everybody else. Yeah. Everybody breaks their promises to, to charity. Charity usually go through everything alone. And charity honestly has faced the most embarrassment yet. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Well, until until all this skit about to come out. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I get what Charity was saying. She was like, nobody cares about me. Nobody cares about my feelings. No nothing. So instead of everybody embracing the fact that she just got hit with another boom, everybody is like, Charity, sit your goddamn no, tail calm down. Calm down. You emotional. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then Jacob teasing her because she was saying, I'm going to be the one that's going to save the church. I'm going to be the one that's going <laughs> to save our family. Yeah. I'm going to be preaching. I'm going to be reaching for the stars. Jacob said, all you want to do is <laughs> free series. <laughs> series. <laughs> and I was like, wow. Now, I'm not going to say at some point that she probably can't do that because you know the least of them, but usually are the greater of them. Mm -hmm. So we ain't going to say what God would do. But, but right now, it's just like a job interview. You're not qualified. Yeah, you can't have a fit to get your way. Hello, but that's yeah. that's that's that that uh, being a spoiled child syndrome. Mm -hmm. You used to stomp at your feet and everything just falls at your feet, but not not at H and H. Yeah, not at the hustle headquarters. Uh -uh, hustle headquarters. You gotta already be a hustler if you want to get in that hustle guy. They need to be able to make some money off of you. Exactly. And they said so uh -uh. they don't make good businesses to put somebody that's inexperienced in office right now. Nope. Yeah. So earlier in the episode. Charity had already had a conversation with uh with the guy named Stella. No, what the name? Bob. Not Bob. Bob. Bill. What the name? Des Moines. Phil. 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 Yeah. Phil. Phil. Yeah. So she had a conversation with <clears throat> Phil, and she was basically telling Phil, 
she was giving him more tea than someone that didn't need to know their information needed to yeah. know. Yeah. And she pretty much told him that me and my sister ain't on good terms. She ain't scared. I'm the good one. I'm mm. this, I'm that. And I want to be AP. Blah, 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 blah. And uh, he pretty much told her, said, listen. At the end of your sister's intro, both of us are pretty much going to be fighting for the position of head pastor. Yep. If you can help me solidify my position as head pastor over this church, I'll definitely make your make you my AP. Why did this I, fool? I don't believe it. Why did this fool? And I don't believe it. He going to get some cooch on the side. Yep. And he going to get his way. He going to get that church. And he gonna be, they going to be like, Charity who? Yeah. Assistant like, pastor who? Uh-huh. Like oh, Naima. she going to be singing again. Yep. And, um... She called him after she got that disappointing news from Gigi. Hmm. Called him and told him, I'll do it. So basically, her job is to get dirt on Gigi yep. so that he can solidify his position as head pastor. You're going to turn on your sister like that for a title. For a title that you ain't even guaranteed to get. And that you know nothing of. Y'all, <laughs> y'all know I love me some Nova. I mean, not Nova. No. Noah. <laughs> y'all, I love some Nova. Well, Noah had called Gigi and left her an urgent message to give her, give him a telephone call back. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. What does Mr. Noah want? Does he yeah, want to yeah. put up against the wall again? Yeah. You married? So, so what you got to talk to my Gigi about? Okay, whatever. <laughs> Earlier in the episode, Gigi had got a miss telephone call a message from prison she act like she didn't know who it was or maybe it was the wrong phone number whatever but we mm. never seen a follow-up on this prison call right yeah so we're sitting there and Noah calls Gigi once again mm -hmm. and he was like what the buck are you coming back she said I've been busy I've been doing a whole lot of skit nope no, well, she has been real busy. Yeah. I, I can vouch for it. Yeah, yeah. He said, listen, I got a telephone call from a prison. I said, you too? <laughs> you too? You got a call too? What the hell is going on right here? With Gigi, we need to talk. <laughs> he said, I got a call from an inmate that says he's our son. I was like, our Wait, son? Wait, what? Like me and you got together in a bed naked and uh -huh. made a kid? <laughs> and now he in the prison? Come on, Gigi, bet. I don't put all my ties and offering behind you. Man. You mean to tell me you don't roll your hot pots in here from Arizona? do came up here to Calvary, up on this plantation here. And you got a whole kid that done went to prison that even the daddy don't know nothing about? Man. What is really going on here? Mm -hmm. I said, hopefully it's some misunderstanding. Somebody playing some kind of games. But it don't look like... Because when that man but, said, I've been following you for a while. And she said, follow me how? Wow. She was shook. Yeah. And so I said, oh, oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. There's some skit going on here. I can't take it no more. I can't take it. So it's so funny how you she become um, the assistant... Well, the interim pastor and all this skit is coming up. That's when that's when kids come up. Mm -hmm. That's when the um, adulteries come up. Drug charges. Yeah, <laughs> you got to do jail on weekends. Come yeah, up. Yeah, you know when you that you, DUI come when up. When you stole some candy at the grocery store, when you all stole, that come all, up. All that stuff come back at they you. They don't care when you a minister. Yeah, but they when don't. you come when you become the pastor of the hospital headquarters, all that skit comes back up. They be up on the internet buying stuff. Yep. Oh, I got that. Say your past come back to haunt you. Man. Yep. They came out the goddamn gate fighting. At first it was going too slow for me. I said, wait on. <laughs> minute he got Church saints, I need y'all to pray. It looked funny seeing Bishop sitting in his own congregation. Man, now. and he looked uncomfortable oh, too. He was mad, boy. <laughs> With his, his, his little pencil beard. He wanted to reach up there and choke freaking Connie. I want to choke her. Yeah. But she looked good, though. I ain't gonna yeah. lie. Yeah, she do. She got For a, now. She got a few extra coins with that money that that Bob don't don't For now. And she looking good. I ain't gonna lie. 
But them no, like them deacons, back. boy. Y'all know about them deacons, man. Mm. They the no, same them deacons, them deacons love doing stuff behind the pastor's back. And they're talking about some finance ministry is going to love this. Hmm. Business. Uh-huh. Business. Business. Yep. Man, but I can't wait to look at the rest of my family's um recap. Yeah. Miss Honey, James, <laughs> Really Be TV. I can't wait to hear what my family got to say about yeah. this. Because hey. I know Miss Honey going to break it all the way down. Yeah. Because she got a church background too. James, he going to read for filth. Yep. And I love it. I can't freak away. Really, BTV, she going to break some skit down. She going to pull some stuff out of there that I didn't see. I can't wait. Man, straight from the VA. The Hustle Headquarters South. To her. To that. Holla.